A tiny quantum computer, far more powerful than today's supercomputers, has been developed by a team of international scientists. The computer is powered by a crystal that is less than a millimetre in length. Dr Michael Biersick is from the Centre for Engineered Quantum Systems at the University of Sydney and he was part of the team that developed the crystal. He joins us now from Sydney. Michael, good morning. Good morning, thanks now, for having me. Having just said where you're from, I'm already feeling relatively dumb, so you're going to have to talk me, <laughs> talk me through this. Uh, tell us about what's been achieved so far with this tiny quantum computer. Sure, so the idea is that uh, we have a device that we've uh, studied for the last few years, uh, which is composed of a collection of about 300 atoms floating in space inside a device called an ion trap. And uh, using that computer, uh, using that system rather, uh, we're able to perform computations uh, in a way that's fundamentally very different than the kind of computer you might have on your desktop or in a laptop. Uh, this is a system that uses quantum physics as at, as, at its heart uh, in order to perform calculations that are exceedingly difficult for even the world's most powerful supercomputers. Right, and, and, and what sort of other ways uh, is it being used in testing? Sure, so the, the kinds of problems we're interested in solving relate to a, a phenomenon called quantum magnetism, which underlies a whole variety of interesting and challenging questions in chemistry and material science. So for instance, if you're interested in engineering some kind of new material for uh, high efficiency power distribution or for uh, clean energy generation, you need to understand how that material behaves at the atomic scale. Unfortunately, modeling that behavior using a standard classical computer, uh, even a supercomputer, can be very challenging based on the fact that a wide variety of quantum effects arise. And in our system, we use those explicit and exact quantum effects uh, at the heart of the functionality of the device, uh, meaning that we're able to make a kind of one-to-one -one correspondence between these two systems, much like you could build a model of an airplane wing uh, in order to study and simulate the behavior of a, of a full-scale and much more complex aircraft, uh, we are effectively building a quantum-scale model. Wow, that's amazing. So I know it's very early days yet, but can you see a day at some stage in the future about when this is uh, commercially applicable? Uh, well, so we, we do think that there is uh, commercial viability in the long term. Uh, of course, we are, as you say, at a very early stage. What we've done so far is really preliminary testing, uh, taking baby steps, making sure that one plus one equals two, if you will. Uh, we have a long way to go before we perform what we would call useful computations, but this system is important because we've crossed this threshold and we know that the potential is far greater than what any classical supercomputer can perform. So the implications for this, for computing going into the future, could be enormous. Uh, well, we certainly hope so. Uh, it's important to say that this is a special purpose device. You can't think of it like the general purpose uh, uh, laptop or desktop you have. But for a certain uh, class of problems, we do think it has the potential to really have great impact. Great stuff. Michael Biesig, thank you for explaining it so well for us this morning. Thank you very much.